Hey, Brian's in here from Doc's Prop Shop. As you guys know, I own a prop business, building and designing props, replicating props from the 80s, which is my specialty. I'm most well known for the DeLorean controller, the Futaba from Back to the Future. So I decided to do something different, show you guys my progress on a replica you just don't see. Uh, in back in the 1980s and 1990s, a very popular franchise was called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. And it was an absolute hit. There was a ride at Disney. There was a park at Disney. Uh, there was three films. And it, it was a great franchise. And it kind of fell off. And we really haven't seen much from it. Now, I believe there was a TV show. Well, I decided to build the shrink ray and a replica of the one from the first film with part two film uh, control panels. So I'll show you guys my progress here. So this is a one-to-one -one, uh, replica with many uh, screen accurate parts on it. It has been quite a journey to build, uh, quite a fun piece to build. Uh, so far, I'm two and a half months in thanks to RPF and people who have uh, built miniatures of these, reaching out, getting screenshots. Uh, it's quite an interesting prop when you start to build it. So I actually started with the nozzle here, which was a 3D print file on Thingiverse, and I scaled it up. It was actually supposed to fit inside of here. It was a tiny little file. So I blew that up and figured out scale and then moved to these wood dowels that are painted gold. So I believe that the screen used one is actually brass. Uh, the pipes on it are brass. Uh, I have a mock-up of the site here, still building it. Um, about 90% complete, a lot of the little stuff to do now, and then the lifting mechanism here. Uh, so going down, we have coils. Uh, our coils are wrapped of copper and uh, water lines for a hose. Uh, now it's different what they use in the film regarding the water lines. They use something else, but I use this uh, braided water lines. So this needs to be replaced, but this is a support that locks in both uh, front and back support pieces. Now these are supposed to be steel. I did come out, cut them out of wood because uh, this is going to be broken down into two pieces and taken to conventions. Now I stacked these uh, circuit boards here and I tried to make sure to get them all Sony because everything seems to be Sony uh, in the film regarding the viewfinder and the Sony Handycam. Now this is the V30, I believe it's the V3 with the white door. Uh, that was actually used in the film, but they're the same model. The only difference is the white door here. So we got the Vintech viewfinder, uh, pretty pricey piece, but this is the correct one from the film. And then we got the laser on here. This just came in today and got it installed uh, for now. Gonna get the correct pieces of the sights. Uh, the Newport, uh, NCT, I believe I'm still working on that part number and that will be the sights all the way through and the laser into the nozzle. Now this is a fully operational laser, so it does work and it will come through the sights, go inside of here, which is hollow. And there's another mirror that points it straight out. So it is a full pass through laser. Now I cut the scissor support myself. So it's got some rough edges, but it is to scale. And uh, it took some time, a couple of different mock-ups to figure out the scale and how it would hold everything. So I'll go ahead and show you the other side. These are battery cables. Uh, then we have extension cord cables. Try to match that as close as possible. Another look at the Sony Handycam and the view monitor. These are operational. Um, this does work. I had to get a fully working one and this does work, it just needs to be hooked up to the cam. So lots to do. So I had to fabricate all the brackets that hold everything. There's just a bunch of wires back here. Uh, this is a smoke tube that runs smoke to look like uh, the cryo tube that is going through the pipes, the um, liquid nitrogen, and anyways, uh, it flows down. So there are those parts on there. So as you can see, there's a lot of little things I got to touch up, a lot of little details that have to be done. But this is a full scale shrink ray. So all the wires run up there like the um, recently restored screen news version. Um, so I will be running stuff in there. This will be a fully interactive uh, shrink ray. So it will actually have 
Uh, it will lift and lower, it'll have smoke, it'll have lights and sounds. I'm building a control panel. This is different than the screen accurate control panel because I wanted more to do because this will be going to conventions and be at my booth, you know, advertising my business. So I do have one of the gauges that is in the second film. We've got the flip switch, we got the key on. So I'm building all of this currently. And then I'm building the actual controller from part one that activates and magnifies the power of the shrink ray, uh, the shrink machine. So a lot of people do call it a shrink ray. It's actually called a shrink machine. Uh, of course, we've got a proton pack down there. I chose this cart because it's easy to move, get in and out of my car. We've got the baseball here. But this will have 18 sounds from the film. It'll have uh, overheat, startup, shrink, unshrink, uh, sounds from all three films, and then phrases from the uh, film, like where the size of boogers, you did what, uh, they're out of our jurisdiction. So across the franchise, I'll come out here so you guys can see how, how tall this is. So this goes up to 10 feet. Uh, the laser itself is 50 three inches uh and it's pretty massive so a lot of work has gone into it trying to match uh different parts colors even the red here getting that correct both of these supports will have to be replaced uh later on but anyways i want to share with you guys a life-size replica of the shrink machine from 1989's honey i shrunk the kids thank you so much for checking out this video uh, to check out more of my work, check out www.docspropshop.org.